Duck felt happier with Edward and set to work at once. The two engines had to work hard, pushing and pulling all afternoon. At last, they reached the top of the hill. Hurrah! 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 laughed the cars. We've broken away! We've broken away! Chase him! Bump him! Throw him off the rails! they yelled. The cars were catching up. As fast as we can, then they'll catch us gradually. The driver was gaining control. Another clear mile and we'll do it. It's up to you now, Duck, cried the driver. Duck put every ounce of weight and steam against the cars. He veered into a siding where a barber had set up shop. The silly cars had knocked their conductor off his van and left him far behind after he had whistled the warning. There was a brake van in the yard that had taken a dislike to Douglas. Things always went wrong when he had to take it out. His trains were late and he was blamed. Douglas began to worry. Donald, his twin, was angry. You can't, said the brake van. I'm essential. Ah, are you? Donald burst out. You're nothing but a screeching and a noise when all's said and done. Spite doggy, would you? Take that! Oh! Oh! cried the van. The van behaved better after that. Until one day, Donald had an accident. James is cross, snickered the spiteful brake van. We'll try to make him crosser still. Hold back, giggled the freight cars to each other. But James was losing steam. I can't do it. I can't do it. Leave it to me, shouted Douglas. The conductor was anxious. Go steady. The van was in pieces. I might have known it would be Douglas, he said. I want to be fair, Douglas, but I don't know. Oh! Oh! cried the van. There's more coming should you misbehave. 